Let's set up some examples of our interpreter. Um, first, assuming that we have substitutions. Uh, so if we had substitutions, what should be the result when interpreting this expression? Here I'm letting y be 10, and then I have lambda x add x to y. So with substitutions, with explicit substitutions, y should get replaced by a 10 here. So the result should be this function. The let body just returns a function, but it's a function that has 10 in place of y. Uh, to make things fit on the slide a little better, I'm just going to move the lambda over there, but it's still the same example. Okay, let's reconsider this example using a deferred substitution, writing it with a bubble, but we represent it with an environment. In that case, what should happen? We should end up interpreting a lambda expression where we still have y there, but there's a, a bubble here, a deferred substitution that says y should equal 10. Right? How do we represent that when we produce the value from interp? We need to produce a lambda. Here's another example that will help uh, expose this question. This is a little hard to read, but let me show you. We've got in the blue here, that is a let form from the previous slides that we know produces a, a function. So this extra curly brace over here, that's a function call, and we're applying it to this argument expression where we've uh, let y be 7 and y. So this function, the part in blue, should return this function that takes an argument x and adds 10 to x. Meanwhile, the argument is going to be 7, because that's what let y be 7 and y is. And so we're going to pass a 7 in, and we should, we should get 17 out in the end. But how does the interpreter get there? Let's look at, let's look at the argument evaluation first, because that's easy. When we interp let y be 7 uh, in y, then we start out with no substitution still. Then let takes the 7 and maps it to y in the environment. And that way, when we interp y, we get a 7 out. Okay, let's look at the function part. So the, the top part here, I've just copied it down. When we interpret that let y be 10, again, we put y equals 10 in the environment, evaluate this lambda, and then we need to get something out. We need to get a function out, but we need to remember that y equals 10 to add to x, not that, say, y equals 7, which was happening in some other part of the interpreter. This bubble needs to stick with our representation of the function needs to stick with the function body to say that y in this function body means 10. And we do that by representing a, a function as a closure. So the word closure means just combining an expression with an environment. To get to the same thing that you would have if you did the eager substitution, uh, just with environment and an expression split into two different pieces. If you ever write something where you had an expression with uh, an environment, and then you keep just the expression part without the environment, you're doing it wrong. You need to always keep your deferred substitutions with the expression that they applied to. So that leads us to the value data type, where we have numbers and functions, but instead of function v, I've written close v, because we're going to represent a, a function as a closure. That closure needs to remember the body expression, like plus xy, and an environment, like y equals 10. And also, we need to remember the name x, which is uh, the, the name of the argument to the function that we use in the body. An environment, remember we had binding, that was binding a name to a number before. Now we bind a name to a value. We replace number type with a value type, where we have numbers that are numv and close v. If we look at the, uh, the example, the old example, say interpreting just the number 10 in the empty environment, what we used to expect back was just a plain 10, but now we expect back a value. Interp always produces a value, so it has to be numv10. So that's why we've been putting e on the end of num e to clarify that's a num expression. Num v10 means it's a value. It's a, something that comes out of interp instead of going into interp. Let's look at another example. Suppose we have let y be 10 in lambda, starting with the empty environment. What we said is we want to represent this function result as a closure. That closure remembers the function body plus yx and it also remembers the substitution that y is mapped to 10, which environments we write as extend m bind y to the value 10 in the empty environment. And the closure finally needs to remember the, the argument name x, so that's what you see here. So these boxes you know, uh, just mean parse backquote. So this is a real test case. Interp of parse of backquote, this thing in the box, should give us a closure with interp of backquote this thing, a plus e expression. Um, and uh, an environment paired with it. So let's go back to our earlier example where we had interpreted this function, 
with the substitution y equals num b10, we get that closure we just described. In the other case where we had let y be 7 and y, and we interpret that, we get a num v7 back. So now num v7 is our argument. Close v here is our function. How do we continue evaluation? We need to evaluate the body expression. All right, we're interpreting the body expression plus yx with some substitutions. Those substitutions include y equals 10, but then the reason we remembered x is so that we can map x to the argument 7. Right? We add that to the, the uh, substitutions that are conceptually attached to the body, right? the, the y equals 10. And then we'll get the right answer up. We'll get 17 as we want it.